Hello everybody, my name is Ming Luke and I couldn't be more excited to be making this video because what it means is that next season, the 21-22 season, Las Cruces Symphony will be returning to live concerts. Now, because of the pandemic, I don't think anybody will take for granted making music and experiencing music in concerts. So I can't wait to make music with the musicians of Las Cruces Symphony and of course, to get to know all of you. So as part of this video, they've asked me to talk a little bit about myself. And so you can probably surmise, I'm a conductor, but I'm also a pianist and I'm also a terrible violinist. I sometimes play in, in orchestras in the back of the second violin section. I'm very lucky to work with a lot of different organizations. Um, I think that oftentimes conductors get pigeonholed. Sometimes people think of conductors like they're opera conductors. They only work with opera or symphonic conductors or education conductors. And for me, composers didn't write only generally for one genre, like Tchaikovsky, for instance. Tchaikovsky didn't write only symphonies. He has fantastic symphonies, but he also wrote incredible operas like Eugene and Yegin, and of course, incredible ballets like Swan Lake, Sleeping Beauty, Nutcracker. And so it's a little odd to me if you only say a conductor is a symphonic conductor because by only focusing on Tchaikovsky symphonies, you don't have the ability to connect the repertoire. And so, for instance, with Tchaikovsky more specifically, there is a piece, Eugene Onegin, an opera, that was written about the time that he was contemplating suicide, and he was writing the fourth symphony at the same time. And there is this famous scene in the birch trees where uh, two best friends are going to kill each other. They're having a duel and the aria is about the loss of innocence, about the birch trees and the blood that gets spattered on the birch, birch trees and the loss of innocence that occurs from them. And in the Fourth Symphony, there is a famous, there's a famous movement where you actually have a song, a Russian song about birch trees too. And it talks about the loneliness that Tchaikovsky had. And so if you only focus on opera, then you miss the content of the symphonies. And likewise, if you only focus on symphonies, you'll miss the opera and the aria that informs the music of the symphonies. So I am lucky to work with a variety of different organizations. I have a professional orchestra in Central California, that's the Merced Symphony. I also work with symphonic chorus. I have a chorus of 250 people plus an orchestra you know, of 80 people, the Berkeley Community Chorus and Orchestra, of which I'm the music director as well. I work with ballet as well. I'm the principal guest conductor of the San Francisco Ballet and the principal conductor for Nashville Ballet. And I also work in education too. So for the Berkeley Symphony, I am their conductor and director of their education programs. And like any musician, we guest around quite a bit. And I work with San Francisco Symphony, San Francisco, um, uh, like I said, ballet. I uh, work with Houston Symphony. I've worked internationally with the Bolshoi Orchestra in Russia. Uh, in England with uh, Birmingham Royal, um, in France with Loquette's Comité, which is a, a phenomenal um, young orchestra. And so each of these experiences gives, I think, context to some of this repertoire because I don't want to only focus on symphonies. I want to focus on the whole range of repertoire that's in um, classical music and how they're all interconnected. What would I bring to Las Cruces Symphony? Well, I think I have two major things that I always try to think about. One is that I want to make the orchestra shine. As a conductor, I feel like my job is to create the circumstances in which the orchestra can perform at its best. And so that means obviously working together as a team and being the conduit for the energy and the performing forces. But second of all, I want anybody that connects with Las Cruces Symphony to get excited about music. Whether you've been coming to the symphony for decades, or this is your first time at the symphony, or maybe you are encountering the music of Beethoven for the first time, like you're five years old, I want you to be just as excited about the music as anybody else. And so whether it's talking to donors, talking to patrons and ticket buyers, or talking to students seeing the symphony for the first time, my goal is the same, is to get everybody excited about the music. And you know, being a musician is not an easy lifestyle and I really get excited about the music and I want to portray my excitement and talk about what moves me in the music 
so that we can all have those transformative musical moments that we've all had. You know, there's not been a single society in the entirety of the world over the history of, of all humankind that has not had music as part of its society. And there's something special about music. And when those circumstances happen, when there's like the most amazing music happening and you're in that moment, those are what I call those transformative moments. And my goal is really to have those transformative moments, both by allowing the musicians to perform at their best and getting the audience excited. Something personable about me, I have three daughters, beautiful daughters, Violet, who is 10, Juliet, who is eight, and then Laurel, who is 18 months, or um, by the time you see this video, maybe 19 months. But Violet plays the violin, Juliet plays piano, so of course, Laurel needs to play the cello, so we have a string trio that's there. Um, something else about me professionally that's very personal to me, I suppose, is the first time I worked in Russia with the Bolshoi Orchestra in Moscow. And we were doing Shostakovich's second piano concerto, amongst other pieces. And the opening of the second movement starts off with this piano and very dark strings, sort of restless, until the piano comes in with the most beautiful major chord. And it's like the sun just coming through the clouds and shining down on earth. And so the beginning of the, the string section, the dark section, just says piano. Now piano just means soft. It's not very soft like pianissimo or very, very soft like pianississimo. It's just piano. It's not excessively soft, it's just soft. And the way the Bolshevik Orchestra played this at the very beginning, without a single instruction for me, was the most devastating, haunting piano, floating and just so evocative. And for me, like I said, it was like, you know, one of these transformative moments where I really saw what the music could be and so that collaboration with the musicians. And so for me, that's a transformative moment. And of course, those are the, tri those are the moments that we try to create as performers, is have the music be so compelling that you can't help but be moved by it and changed by it. So I'm really excited to meet you all in person and that I get the honor to perform with the orchestra, especially the first concert of the 21-22 season. So I will see you all soon. And until then, stay safe and have music in your heart. Until then, I'll see you later.